Hello, my name is Hannah Fay, and today I'll be teaching you about mirages. Mirages are displaced images. Mirages occur when light travels through layers of air that have different temperatures. You don't have to go to a desert, for example, to see one. Right here in Southwest Florida, you have probably seen a mirage on a hot summer day while traveling down on the highway. The heat of highway ahead of you may appear to be a lake. However, what you really saw was just an image of the sky. Light from the sky was refracted by the hot air above the pavement. Hot air refracts light differently than cold air. As a result, the light coming from the sky is bent so that way it appears to be coming from the road. You also may have noted inverted images of cars some miles ahead of you. These two are mirages caused by the refraction of light as they pass through air with different temperatures. Mirages also occur when the air next to the ground is colder than the air from above. In that case, the light is bent downward. Objects on the horizon may appear to be above the horizon, a phenomenon known as looming. For example, the skyscrapers in New York City, which are normally below the horizon, may become visible under the right atmospheric conditions. Let's talk a little bit more about the continuous bending of light that causes the mirages. The density of air, which is the weight per volume, increases as light travels from the outer edges of the atmosphere into the Earth's surface. Unlike the passage of light from the air to water, there is a gradual bending of the light rather than a sudden change as light passes through the atmosphere. As a result, Sunlight and starlight are continuously refracted as they travel through Earth's air. Near Earth's surface, temperature differences can cause the differences in the density of air. Air expands when heated, so hot air is less dense than cold air. It is the differences in air temperature that create mirages like the one I'm about to show you. Now I'm going to show you how to create a model that demonstrates the gradual changes in density caused by light bending gradually rather than suddenly. For this experiment, you will need a clear rectangular plastic container, some sugar, powdered creamer, a funnel, a straw, laser pointer, and some water. It's best to do this experiment in a dark room so that way you can see the best results. For the first part of the experiment, you will have to move into an area where you can easily access water. You will need to fill up half of your plastic container with hot tap water like where, about, where I have it indicated. Like that. Next, you will have to create a sugar solution. Fill a pot with the same amount of water as you put in the plastic container. Pour in two cups of sugar. And stir until dissolved. Like this. Now I've moved everything into the bathroom because the bathroom is actually one of the darker places in my house. Thanks, Mom. So now you're going to add <clears throat> a pinch of creamer and you're going to sprinkle it into the, <laughs> to the <laughs> container. Yeah. Now take your straw and put it into the funnel. This is so that way you can help the sugar solution down to the bottom of the container. And right here is my helpful assistant, Mom. So now take part of your sugar solution and pour it into the container. See, this is hot. Ready? Alright, next you're going to turn off all the lights and you're going to take your laser pointer and shine it through the container. See, look, when you shine it straight through the container, it's a straight line. When you shine it through the top of the water, it's a straight line. However, if you bend it down at an angle, then the light is now being refracted. And if you get it even further down, you can see that the light is bouncing off the surface because of the density of the water. 
Isn't that neat? In this experiment, you notice that the sugar solution causes the laser light to bend no matter what angle. These indices of refraction can be defined by Snell's law. For this experiment, air was n equals 1 and the sugar solution was about n equals 1.5. The light will bend through the change in the medium either toward or away from the normal. Let's say, for example, my angle of incidence was 30 degrees. To find your angle of refraction, plug your numbers into the equation. Your equation should look something like this. You should have gotten 19.5 degrees. So if you were to draw this diagram, you would notice that your angle is bedding towards the normal.